So again, welcome everyone to our today's webinar. It's my great honor to have actually our two speakers of today, Isabel Fortier, who is a professor of um, clinical epidemiology at the Department of Medicine at McGill. And she is actually the main PI of Maelstrom Research about which we will learn more today in the webinar. And we also have Professor Muriel Bouchou, who is the head of the Department of Epidemiology and Health Systems at Unisante in Lausanne. And she's also the chair of our um, working group for cohorts and registries. With that, I would like to give a very short intro um, on the topic today. And then actually we will have the part of Isabel on the SPHN network on Maelstrom. And then we actually will have an example of the Skipok cohort, um, which is now represented on the Maelstrom catalog by Muriel Boschi. So a bit on the history. So actually around one and a half years ago, actually, I still remember it. We were sitting together with the task force, which is led by Muriel, and we were discussing what's the best approach to actually make metadata of cohorts findable and make it available in a catalog. So what kind of catalog to use to really enrich or like really make this data findable for others to, for example, start a collaboration to find out which data is there. And I was actually very happy that very soon we actually started to um, discuss with Isabel and her group about the Maelstrom catalog and if this could be a potential solution for Switzerland. And as you can see today, this was our choice. And we actually moved on with that collaboration. Actually, in the first pilot phase, we included five Swiss cohorts into the Maelstrom um, catalog. And actually, since this was going very well, we actually launched a call for additional cohorts to join the metadata catalog this year. So we have another five cohorts with which we are currently um, working to be integrated into the catalog. And I think with that, I would like to hand over to Isabel to tell us more about how all of that work and how it looks like. Good, so um, thanks a lot. Like uh, Sabine was mentioning, uh, I think it's uh, up to now a really uh, good collaboration that we initiated. And I'm uh, really happy to be able to present today the, the first wave of success of the, the collaboration. So there's a change in the way we are doing science. Uh, we need always larger, larger sample size. We need to compare data across different countries, across different uh, organization, across different region. But mainly with all the FAIR principle, we need to optimize the impact and the use of individual, uh, the data collected by individual studies. And like you see here, and it continues after uh, uh, 2017, obviously, but there is a, a always increasing uh, number of uh, initiatives that are co-analyzing data and reusing data uh, that are already collected. So the problem, however, is when you need, to, you want to use data first, existing already collected first you need obviously quality and the data you're using but you need as well to understand the data that is collected because it's not necessarily your data your own data you need also to access the data in a secured way but also access the data only if it's required or granted and granted and then you need to properly use that data and, and document in the right way the, the, the additional uh, processing or, or the, the, the result you will generate using that uh, data that is already uh, collected. So we need more and more tools to uh, facilitate the documentation, facilitate the access, facilitate the integration, facilitate the co-analysis across different uh, organizations. And that's what we are trying to do. 
So it's to develop those methods, those tools, those guidelines to help using properly, documenting properly, uh, and uh, analyzing properly the data collected by the uh, different uh, studies. So Malstrom is uh, an international platform uh, that was created in 2012, but based on activities led by uh, Paul Burton uh, in UK, Vincent Ferretti for the development of software in Canada, uh, Bartok Knoppers for the ethical uh, aspect, am I? Uh, as well as many other collaborators under uh, the umbrella of a, a, an organization called P3G, Public Population Project and Genomics, that was initiated in 2004. Uh, since 2012, uh, we worked with uh, over 40 uh, networks, national, uh, Canadian, as well as international network, to test, to develop the tools, or to use the tools that uh, we, have, we are, have developed. So one of the tools, and that's, we will talk about that more in detail, is the central catalog, the study catalog that uh, I will describe in a minute. But we are also developing tools like methodological guideline uh, for the data documentation, but uh, tools like software for, uh, for unique court, as well as for network of studies to be able to more easily uh, process data under the same format, document the data, harmonize, for example, and uh, access the data. Then we are supporting different national as well as international initiative to implement the, the infrastructure as well as uh, uh, facilitate the flow of the, the work uh, to be done to harmonize uh, 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 document and co-analyze the data, but that include as well uh, catalog and harmonization platform. So those are the main, the two main um, tools that we're developing. So everything around the, the, the software, as well as the procedures around study cataloging, as well as the software, data infrastructure and procedures around uh, data harmonization integration all the processing and the co-analysis. But let's start with the catalog. There are different type of catalog. If you look at on the, on the web, some of the catalog will just have a brief description of the study. So, and the aim, the objectives, and that's it. Others will also list the type of information collected uh, by, the, by the studies. Other will add detailed comprehensive metadata. When with comprehensive metadata, I mean the data dictionary uh, with the variable name and the label. And then some catalog will also uh, give access to the data or at least document the aggregated data. So for example, the, the participant distribution across uh, the marital status or, or smoking status or whatever else. So the software we are developing allow to develop a catalog with the four levels. So we can uh, include um, as well the data, but on the Mastron website, uh, we only you, uh, have the three, four uh, levels because we, we will not and are not and will never uh, be the one responsible for the data. It's the core that are responsible for the data. That's the core that give access to the data. We have nothing to do at all with any access to the data. So, but the, the software we are developing are used by some court to uh, develop their own website and, and provide their, you know, for example, um, the you can have the, uh, a form to ask for access to the data. It's going to the data access committee of the court uh, and the court evaluate if it's granting the access or not and give access, et cetera. So um, it's really different what we do with Mastrom with what the software can offer. 
And here I will just mention that all the software are uh, open source free. You can go on the Maslow website and download the software and use them for your own needs if you, if you like. Okay, so generally the majority of the catalog are more in the, the two first layers. But uh, in Malstrom, we have the green layer that uh, allow to, to go more in deep in the search uh, of the, the information for the, for the quote. So um, first thing, the study description. Uh, here, what you see is an example of a mother and child quote and the different type of information that uh, is documented in the catalog to describe a, a, the study. So you have information like the study design, the objectives of the study, the start and end years, but as well the uh, list of uh, PIs, the person to contact to have access to the information. You also have, um, if, uh, it's minimal information, but some information about if access to a sample is possible, yes or no, uh, and same for the data and uh, to obviously to really have more information about access, uh, user need to contact the, the PIs, but it give a, a, an overview uh, of the potential. Then you have, and here you have the example, you have the, the mothers, the different subpopulations. So the subpopulation of the mothers, the subpopulation of the fathers, and the subpopulation of the babies. And for uh, each population, a description of each data collection event. So for the population, you will have the, the description, but as well the source of recruitment, the selection criteria that will be described. And for the data collection event, you will have information, for example, about the uh, type of information uh, collected. Um, so here you have in a little bit more detail. So for example, for the, the mother at the first uh, visit uh, and the mother at the 20, uh, at two years uh, postpartum, you have the description of the information that is collected at those two time point, and you have the same for the, the partner status, the, the, the partner of the mother. So that's the first step. And when it's done, we also take for each subpopulation, each data collection event, the data dictionary, so the list of variables collected, no data, just the, the metadata about the information collected. And we take each and categorize each variable under a series of um, 19 domain and 134 subdomain. So we take uh, the variable, uh, do you have cancer and tag it, attach it to diseases and under diseases to neoplasm uh, of the ICD-10. And here you have an example for the, lifestyle and behaviors, uh, the, the subdomain that are included. So we have three people doing full-time the study description and the tagging. Uh, they, they do a little bit of, of each, each day. Um, and before we tried and were not, we were successful, it was not perfect, but uh, uh, to develop a, Automatized uh, classification based on uh, text mining and uh, inter uh, artificial intelligence. It was working, but with the number of variables we currently have and the low quality of the label that we receive often for the uh, the, the, the the variable, uh, it's hard to be able to do add, uh, efficient text mining text mining. So we are trying, uh, the, the, our objective for next year is to try to develop a new tool to facilitate the tagging because it's uh, extremely long to do. So we're working on it. So when all that work is done, so the variable classify and the study described, uh, you can go on the website and, and search 
uh, your, for the, your network, it's only uh, five studies up to now, it will grow up, but um, you can search studies by the design, you can search uh, by the number of participants, uh, et cetera. And you can also select some variable to uh, arrive to a variable list. That is an example. Uh, if you, uh, for example, selected the uh, the domain, the subdomain uh, where you, you want to have the, the you, want, you have a research question and you would like to have all those uh, uh, information to answer the, the research question. Um, that is what you will have. So the number of uh, the studies, as well as the number of variable for each studies in each of these domains. So that's an easy way to uh, rapidly evaluate uh, the studies that have information um, that you are looking for, but as well to explore the potential to co-analyze data across uh, studies. Because you, in addition to just having here, like identify uh, the, the, the studies, uh, collecting information about education, for example, you also have for each uh, of the study, the same, you can have exactly the same, but divide by subpopulation as well as data collection event. So here what you, you see, for example, is that the uh, education, the question about education is asked uh, just uh, at the at baseline, but sometimes, for example, with the I don't know physical activity and uh, depression, if it's something that interests you, you need as well when you want to analyze the data to check the alignment when each variable, each type of information is collected. Uh, particularly if you have several studies, you cannot ask. Uh, physical activity and depression, if it's what you're interested in, in with five years difference, uh, it will perhaps not answer to, to your needs. So um, that table can help you to, in addition to understand uh, what type of information is collected, it gives you as well the timing of the collection. And when you click on uh, one of the number, it will lead you to the list of variable collected. And when you click on one of the list uh, of the variable of the list, it will lead you to the specific uh, variable. So here, the distribution uh, for the uh, education educational level. I mentioned that the software well, was allowing to go a little bit further. So if, for example, one given study would like to use the software for its own need, uh, that table where you have the variable could also give access to uh, a figure with the, and a table with the distribution of the participant uh, across the different um, uh, subcategories of the variable. But it's not available on the, obviously on the master on the side. So on the master on the side currently, uh, we have 23 uh, partner network that uh, decided to document their partner study on the uh, central website. Uh, that means 289 studies. And uh, within these studies, uh, 174 also have documented the, the, the list of variable. It's not all of the studies for which we have the, the list of variable and uh, over 1 million variable documented. The advantage of centralizing the information is, you know, if you take the example of your network, uh, you can search, you know, potential to collaborate or co-analyze data across the, the studies from Switzerland, but you can also explored with UK Biobank or with uh, ALSPAC or with other studies elsewhere, the potential to co-analyze. So um, that's the advantage to have the same format, the same uh, tool to explore uh, variable. So not only across uh, one country but or, or one network, but ac across several. Um, the, we have in uh, Sweden, there is an, uh, an 
organism, the court Sweden, that is doing exactly the same as you. So they are trying to document all of the studies of the, of the country. And we are trying to do, it's not 100% perfect, but we are trying to do the same for Canada. In the other countries, you have some studies, but the exercise is a little bit different. It's more uh, network like, uh, for example, mind map that was interested in uh, aging and uh, ur urban uh, environment. So they had uh, 14 studies. So we work with them to document those 14 studies across different countries. So that's for the Maelstrom catalog. Um, what you see there is the distribution of the studies. So the majority of the study have less than uh, 50,000 uh, participants. Um, and majority are cohorts. We have some case control or other type of uh, design, but the majority are cohorts. And the majority as well uh, started relatively recently. Then what you can see, and it's th that is uh, another illustration of what I've shown uh, a couple of minutes ago. So you have here the different subcategories. You don't see a lot, but uh, here you have, for example, age, sex, uh, marital status, uh, familial structure. And for each of the study, if they are collecting or not that, uh, that type of information. So uh, that's a, a way to visualize relatively easily who is collecting what. If we are looking more uh, in detail with your network, um, just five studies, but that's a good start. Uh, so the three of them um, have uh, between five and, and uh, 10,000 participants. And you have one uh, that is 10 to, to uh, 50,000 uh, participants. Another one that is uh, a little bit smaller. And the majority of uh, like four or, or three or four have uh, collected urine uh, and, or, and or blood. Here is what you see is the, the distribution of the year start of the studies, as well as the, the time point for data collection for each of the studies. So that's a good way as well to see you know, the, the alignment of the study in terms of follow-up as well is extracted from the, from the website. If you are looking at the, the same figure I just shown uh, before, you can see for each of the study who is collecting what. Uh, and that, that, that is uh, like you see uh, larger um, illustration that you have here. Um, and with the addition of the five more studies that will uh, provide the additional information, but mainly that's just a, a figure, but uh, with the uh, information on the website, uh, you can search and refine your search more easily. And like I mentioned, access as well to the specific uh, data collected. So how it works, um, the group, uh, Jan, Sabine, and, and the group uh, on your side uh, identified the studies to be included uh, and this order studies that are interested to join uh, volunteer. Uh, then uh, we work on two, with two steps. First is the study description where uh, we will, with the, the group in uh, Switzerland, uh, collect the information and complete the first draft of the study description that will then be sent to the PIs or the study uh, contact. Uh, to be validated and with exchange or change that or add the data collection event or we work in collaboration to finalize uh, the study description. Then uh, put it online on the website. When that is done, uh, we are going to the second step that is the addition of the uh, study specific uh, variable. 
And there we need to have access to the data dictionaries. Ideally with the questionnaire as well, because sometimes when you have a label that is uh, written cat, yes, no, uh, it's hard to know if it's I'm allergic to cat or I like cat or I have a cat. So having a questionnaire help us to understand the data, the, the data dictionary. And the data dictionary can be in different format. It uh, doesn't, uh, ideally not in PDF, but uh, different format are, are uh, we can receive the data, on, uh, the data dictionary under data form, a different data format, and we transform the data under the uh, OPAL, uh, compatible uh, format compatible with Opal, that is the software we are using. And then when everything is clean, we have everything, we start the, the categorization, the, the classification of the variable in different categories. Um, and when it's done, implement on the website, obviously uh, informing and, and working again in collaboration with the study. And then there is the long-term maintenance and update because uh, here we're talking about courts. So often you will have new data collection, new uh, uh, or modification of the information that should be done on the website on the long-term. So that was for the, the, uh, the catalog and we can discuss uh, later um, the, the result. Just check the, the time. Uh, and uh, the other thing we are doing is to support harmonization platforms. So when two, three studies want to take the, the information collected and align the information in order to be able to co-analyze data across studies. Obviously, if it's retrospective, so if data is already collected and you try to after align the information, that was collected in different way for different purposes, it's more heterogeneous and it's harder than if it's like the same information collected everywhere. It's possible, it's just that the, the harmonization potential will be different. Uh, I will just, uh, and, and often when you co-analyze data, you can use different infrastructure. So you can go with a meta-analysis where each study will do the uh, analysis that, that need to be performed, and then you will uh, do a standard meta-analysis with the results generated by each of the study. Sometimes data can be pulled somewhere on the same server, and sometimes you can use a federated approach for the analysis. Everything need, all of that need to uh, a certain level of harmonization, obviously, if you want to co, to co-analyze the data. And that's the challenge. Um, here, what you see is an example of a, a project that we did uh, in, in Canada. So it's a mother and, and child a network uh, interested in mother and child uh, studies. And what you see here is, the ethnicity, the variable for ethnicity. So in the example, you have different type of selection. So for some of the studies, it was possible to select multiple choices. And for some, it was not possible to select. You had to select only one of the categories. And as you see, the, the, the categories used by each of the court are, are quite different. So it's not possible to think that you can just arrange the, or generate the same variable so easily. Uh, you could, for example, have you know the one in green were collected by all of the studies and have another category that is other. You could choose to have another uh, definition of the, the, the core variable to be generated across the studies. But there's a lot of thinking uh, behind the scene to be able to arrive to uh, the proper decision. And what is extremely important as well is to document properly those decisions that you are taking. And then what is as well extremely important is to harmonize to answer a specific research question because 
if uh, you know depending on the question that uh, that that is addressed uh, the decision to pull all together uh, in uh, two categories uh, the uh, that specific in with that ex, uh, specific example or you have three or four categories will depend of the research question that is addressed um same thing for here it's an example of physical activity with the questionnaire with the long and short form uh you cannot just think that uh, the ipad can be pulled together without thinking the long and short form you need to sit down and think before uh, deciding to pull together the information and co-analyze. And again, document what you have done. So that's what uh, Maastrom is uh, doing as well. We are developing a guideline as well as software that are used to facilitate it. There is no uh, magic there. All the work need to be done uh, and, and thinking need to be made but we are developing the tools to facilitate the process. And here you have uh, to, to finish. Uh, there is an example of the uh, CAMPAT project. It's uh, 300,000 participants across Canada. Uh, and they did the, the harmonization, but the way the infrastructure is behind the scene is that they have uh, one server uh, that is uh, used for uh, five of the of the port and the one server that is used for the Quebec port because in Quebec we cannot send the data outside of Quebec so it was not possible to pull the information together so there is a one server in Quebec one server in Ontario for the rest of the port and the the, the software are used to uh, host the harmonized data and and co-analyze the data um, so for the catalog or for the harmonization platform, uh, the idea is, you know, that's the, an example of our friends from uh, Sweden uh, that did a project harmonizing data. And what you see with the blue line, it's the time that is required to understand the data and to uh, man uh, manage the data, to clean the data, to organize the data. Uh, and I say data, but it's metadata as well as data. And the first time they, 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 they came uh, and they discussed with us, they, they shown that um, uh, timeline and, and, and uh, person months spent for each of the different tasks asking us to transform their project in, in that. Uh, that's not what we can do, but we can certainly uh, share our expertise and tools and now the catalog to uh, try to help you uh, facilitate your work and, and concentrate on the research instead of concentrating on understanding uh, or having a, asking for access to data. So thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot for inviting me for this uh, short presentation. The idea here is really to, to give you a concrete example of uh, the usefulness of the Maestrum catalog for a given cohort, uh, in this case, KIPOC, uh, for which I am the PI, uh, in collaboration with other investigators uh, uh, in uh, other institutions. So SKIPOG, the Swiss Kidney Project on Genes in Hypertension is a population-based multicentric cohort that uh, was funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. So this is public money. And as you know, we have the responsibility of uh, making these data as useful and as accessible and reusable as possible. So when uh, talking about fair principles. In theory, that's very simple to say, but in practice, it's not so easy to implement. And in my view, the Maelstrom catalog is really a very convenient and efficient way of going one step further in that process. And concretely, for the Skipper cohort, what does it give? You see here the type of uh, location of our participants. So uh, I said population-based cohort, but also family-based. Uh, multicentric, we cover three Swiss cantons, 
Bern, Vaux, and Geneva, and two li linguistic regions. We have a couple of people outside of Switzerland because it's family-based, and sometimes one member of the family was located outside of Switzerland. So we have collected uh, data on about uh, 1,000 people, so it's not a big cohort from the sample size point of view. However, the density of information that we have collected on those people is quite uh, important. So we have thousands of non-molecular variables and millions of molecular variables on each participant. And if you have to deal with one project, one cohort, it may be quite uh, easy uh, to have in mind all the type of information that has been collected. But once you are involved in 10, you know, 15 projects, after a while, you, you don't re exactly remember uh, the exact nature of the data that have been collected and also uh, in details, you know, each of the variables that have been collected, collected so far. So uh, one use of the Maestrum catalog, as was uh, just said by Isabel, is to describe the project. So this is to me very useful when someone asks me about this cohort, you know, I just send the link to the Maestrum catalog and tell them, just have a look there. You can see, you know, what is the aim of the cohort? Who are the investigators involved? And what is our study design? And you know, when did the data collection start? When did it end? And so on. So general information that is presented in a standardized way and then can be also compared with other cohorts that can be found in this catalog. So this is a first a very uh, useful uh, the implementation of the Maelstrom catalog. The next step is to oneself be aware of the type of information that we have collected. Of course, I know the code very well because I'm the PI, but you know, I was not uh, so well aware that we have a very strong focus on laboratory measurements. So this can be clearly seen once the thousands of variables have been cataloged and organized in a standardized fashion. So you can see which area we cover well and which ones we don't cover so well. And as was shown by Isabel before, we can also do comparisons across cohorts. So that's also a very interesting information to obtain. It also of interest to external people who may want to request access to the data, you know, to be well aware about the strengths of the project and its main orientation. Going into more details, you know, uh, we have included close to 2,000 variables for the baseline and 2,000 variables for the three-year follow-up. Uh, so far, are not included in the catalog all the genetic, epigenetic, and omics data. You know, millions of them that have been collected at the same time. But for this non-molecular information, it's very useful to be able to know in which area of information uh, how many variables have been collected and which types of variable have been collected. If we take the example of tobacco for Skipog, myself be before having the metadata stored in this catalog, I wouldn't have been able to say out of my head how many variables we have on tobacco. But when I looked into the catalog, I see that we have 30 variables. So it may seem small, but still that's quite detailed information that we have collected on this exposure to tobacco, you know, the type of product, the, the amount consumed, when it started, when, when it ended, and so forth. So people who have interest in accessing Skipog data know very well, you know, how well we characterized tobacco smoking in that cohort. Another usefulness is if you are interested in a given type of you know, phenotype, you can easily find out from the Maestro catalog which cohort have collected this type of data. For instance, if I take 24 hour dietary recall, which we don't have in Skipog, but which we would like to add in the next step, I can see that you know, there are some of the Maelstrom uh, included cohorts that have collected this data. So it gives me very easily that type of information. And from my perspective, I am using this catalog not only for internal use for myself, but also for our team in particular, in particular when we have new colleagues joining the team so that they can easily 
and very fast know uh, what type of information is included in the cohort, but also for external people who would like to request access to the data so that they can you know, formulate their request in a more precise way and also have a good idea of whether or not they are interested in accessing our data. So this is all I wanted to, to show you for today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Isabel and Muriel, for this very nice um, presentations and the insights into the work of Maelstrom and the work we have done together with the Swiss cohorts. Actually, I would like, to, before we go to the questions, to round up a bit about what are our next steps in this collaborations. I think we heard it already. We have more or less already five new cohorts um, in the starting position for their um, for their data be, or metadata being integrated in the into the um, catalog. So this is really ongoing work currently. And since the interest is um, so large in the Swiss community, we actually plan to launch another call in spring 2022 to actually um, select more cohorts um, to join the Maelstrom catalog or the SPHN network on Maelstrom. So if you are interested, um, watch out for our communications and the homepage um, when we launch that call. Also, I would like to spend maybe half a minute on what else is SPHN doing related to cohorts. So I think we mentioned already that there is a task force which is led by Muriel on cohorts and registry and registries. And this um, task force is actually developing and harmonized with cohort and registry strategy with the Maelstrom project only being one of their ex um, activities. So there is much more um, to come. Also, we have a driver, an SPHN driver project, the so-called SAC project, which is this, um, the Swiss Aging Citizens Reference, where also uh, Muriel is a co-PI, which actually would like to include data from free cohorts, harmonize it, and then also co-analyze it um, to build this um, aging citizen reference. And also, I think something which we plan currently is um, we would like to do another call for cohorts. So how can we achieve interoperability, harmonization of variables between cohorts? And that's actually an SPHN call, which um, we plan for 2022. And with that, I actually also would like to say a big thank you, I think, first to the two speakers of today for that wonderful webinar. But of course, also to all the people who are involved in that project, being the participating cohorts, the task force um, and the members, which were really shaping this collaboration and, and also the calls. Um, also, Isabel, as she already mentioned behind the scenes, she has a whole team with which we work very closely together. Also in our team, I think my special thanks goes to Jana Mida, who's really the coordinator on the SPHN side and really making sure that everything is um, working very smoothly. 